أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق وأحسن الحديث كلام الله جل وعلا وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار ثم أما بعد عباد الله أيها المسلمون أذكركم ونفس المقصر بتقوى الله سبحانه وتعالى فإن من اتقى الله وقاه ويسر له أمور دينه ودنياه وذلك بامتثال الأوامر واجتناب النواهي على الوجه الذي جاءت به شريعة الله سبحانه وتعالى Once again, a reminder for myself and for, my you, for you, oh my brothers and sisters in Islam that we should fulfill the taqwa of Allah سبحانه وتعالى This is the sign of good in this life and in the hereafter Taqwa brings nothing but good for the people in this life and in the hereafter. And we fulfill the taqwa by acting upon the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the best of our abilities. And to stay and abstain and distance ourselves from the prohibitions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And those who wrong themselves, they should always turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with repentance. <coughs> أما بعد عباد الله أيها المسلمون فقد خرج الإمام البخاري رحمه الله تعالى في صحيحه من حديث عبد الله بن عباس رضي الله عنهما قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم نعمتان مغبون فيهما كثير من الناس نعمتان مغبون فيهما كثير من الناس الصحة والفراغ Al-Imam al-Bukhari rahimahullahu ta'ala collected this hadith in his sahih on the authority of Abdullah ibn Abbas radiyallahu anhuma who said that the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said there are two blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that many people are not using properly and they are losing in this regard therefore there are two blessings that the people are not using and utilizing properly. Health and leisure time. Health and free time. قال العلام ابن عثيمين رحمه الله هذا الحديث العظيم فيه 
أن كثيرا من الناس لا ينتفعون من هذين النعمتين من هاتين النعمتين نعمة الصحة والفراغ One of the great scholars of our time Al-Allam ibn Uthaymin Rahimahu Allah When he explained this hadith He mentioned and he says Many people Are not benefiting from these two great blessings of Allah They don't get benefits from their health When they're healthy And they don't get much benefit from their leisure time when they have some time, some free time. وذلك عباد الله أن الإنسان لما يكون صحيحا وعنده من الوقت فهو يستطيع أن يقوم بما أوجب الله عليه ويقوم بما ينفعه في هذه الدنيا وبما أوجب الله عليه من حقوق الله وحقوق نفسه حقوق أهله وحقوق عباد الله عليه ويتزود من النوافل ومن الخير لأنه صحيح عنده القوة وعنده الفراغ الوقت لكن قد تتغير الأمور ويندم الإنسان أيما ندم على فوات هذه الفرص العظيمة بعدم استغلال هاتين النعمتين الصحة والفراغ نعم when a person is healthy <coughs> they strong because health is associated with strength energy ambition and if it's coupled with free time these are two favors and two blessings when a person have free time and they have health people can fulfill their obligations towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by acting upon that which Allah has made obligatory upon them and in easy way because they have health which is associated with strength with energy and they have free time as well no rush and likewise, they fulfill the rights of the others upon them. Sons taking care of their family members. Being there to assist and help and aid to the best of their abilities, those who need help and assistance. Once again, because they have these two blessings of Allah. Health and free time. Because the one who's sick, he worries about only himself. لَمَّا يَمْرَدَ الْإِنسَانِ فَهُوَ الَّذِي يَحْتَاجُ الْمُسَاعَدَ الْآنِ يَحْتَاجُ مَنْ يَقُومُ بِهِ وَمَنْ يَعُودُهُ Because when a person gets sick, forget about him trying to help others. Because when a person gets sick, he needs to be helped. He needs to be assisted. Add to that when a person has no time, he has health, but he's busy. The lot of obligations has to be postponed. A lot of things are not achieved because of this. فعلينا عباد الله أن نغتنم هاتين النعمتين العظيمتين. We have to take advantage of these two blessings of Allah. When you're healthy, use it. Perform actions of worship. You have free time, use it. To get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because we live in a dunya. We're human beings. Things may change. As we are no stranger to this. We got sick before. We've been very busy. Sometimes. So we have to take advantage. When you're healthy, take advantage of it. You never know when you're going to get sick. And you never know when you're going to be very busy as well. 
لكن أهم شيء هو علينا أن دائما نفكر في الموت لأن الموت ينهي الآمال These two favors that we are talking about today and these blessings of Allah which is health and free time that many people are not benefiting from them they will have nothing but regret and sorrow when the death come upon anyone at that moment they will understand how important or the importance of these two blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when a person see death they will wish if they can be in they can go back to this dunya why so they can do that which they didn't do when they were healthy and they have the free time in it as allah tells us in surah al mu'minun hatta idha jaa ahaduhum al mawt qala rabb irji'un li'alli la'alli a'malu salihan fi ma tarakt until when death come upon any one of them, he will say, My Lord, send me back to this dunya. Why? To keep being negligent and lazy and wasting the time. La La Ali Amalu Salihan. That I may do good in that which I have left behind. Also in Surah Al Munafiqun, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned. In the end of it, من قبل أن يأتي أحدكم الموت فيقول ربي لولا أخرتني إلى أجل قريب فأصدق وأكون من الصالحين. Likewise, at this moment, a person will say, "My Lord, if you only grant me respite, give me a little time." For the same purpose, so that I do good in that which I didn't do before. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Kalla, nay, no one will be given this. Death is only one, one way. No one comes back from death. Walakin ibad Allah, qad ya'ridu lil insan fi hayatihi. قبل الموت death is inevitable is a certainty death is certain tomorrow is not but a person may be deprived from these two blessings as we mentioned earlier even before death come upon a person in this life a person get very sick now they cannot move, they cannot do the things that they supposedly done when they were healthy. So we have to prepare for these moments. We're human beings, we're vulnerable, we're weak. Don't let your muscles fall you. Or your youth, because you're young, you're still, now it takes a bite of a mosquito, you don't even know when it did it. And then you catch fever. And before you know it, they take you to the hospital. And before you know it, who knows? Some people make it to the hospital and come back next day. Some people make it to the hospital and they're still there for years. Laying down, can't move. The only thing that's still functional, alhamdulillah, for some, is their tongue, which they remember Allah, but they cannot come to Jumu'ah, cannot visit other people. Cannot do things that they supposedly been doing when they were healthy. So remember, Ya Abdullah, this ni'mah. Ni'mah al-sihha. When you're healthy and you're, alhamdulillah, you can move and you wake up and you can do things, thank Allah for it first. You thank Allah, especially when you see other people around you who are sick and been afflicted with diseases, with illnesses. Whenever you see a person like that, you thank Allah for what you have. You thank Allah and you praise Him for the health you have. Some people, subhanAllah, don't pay attention to these favors of Allah. Blessings. Their minds go to material things. 
our minds keep going to material things. Instead of really appreciating these favors. Some people are filthy rich. Because they cannot drink water anymore. They cannot walk. They cannot talk. They got a lot of money. But they don't have these blessings of health. Being able to wake up in the morning. And walk towards the masjid. In which with every step you subhanAllah, you know the reward. They cannot do things with their little ones, with their children. They cannot go for a walk with their grandparents. Or with their parents and the like. But you, you still. You're healthy. Thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that. وَنِعَمُ اللَّهِ عَلَيْنَا كَثِيرًا عِبَدَ اللَّهِ نِعَمُ اللَّهِ كَثِيرًا عَلَيْنَا جِدًّا Many are the favors and the bounties and the blessings of Allah that we enjoy. And it necessitates from us to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for each and every one of them. But the greatest of all of these favors of Allah is Al-Islam. Is the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has guided us to Al-Islam. أَضَلَّ اللَّهُ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَ عَنِ الْإِسْلَامِ أَقْوَامًا وَهَدَاكَ يَا عَبْدَ اللَّهِ فَاشْكُرِ اللَّهُ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَ فَهِيَ نِعْمَ وَأَيُّمَا نِعْمَ هِيَ أَعْظَمُ نِعْمَ أَعْظَمُ نِعَمِ اللَّهِ الْهِدَايَ لَدِينِ اللَّهِ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَ نعم Being guided to Al-Islam amongst all of these people that are upon batil, upon falsehood upon shirk, disbelief, atheism, worshipping idols, animals, stars and human beings. But you worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're upon this upright religion of Islam. This is the greatest favor. This is the greatest blessing. And it comes only from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nobody can give it. Nobody can bestow this on anyone. Only Allah makes successful and guides whom He will to be upon Islam. Allah is pleased with Islam for us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, اليوم أكملت لكم دينكم وأتممت عليكم نعمتي ورديت لكم الإسلام دينا This day I have perfected my religion. Or your religion, I have perfected your religion for you. And completed my favors upon you. And I am pleased for you, Islam, as your religion. This is something that Allah is pleased for us. We have to be pleased with it. And He has to be shown in our actions, in our statements, in our lives. How could it be possible for us to be sad over some material things when we have the greatest blessing. When we have the greatest thing. Some people they get happy. When they get a raise. They move to another place. They get a better car. They get a better piece of furniture. They are so happy. But when it's taken from them. They are so sad. You have Islam. You got to be happy. Your hearts have to be in joy. All time. You making money or not? You're still happy. Why? Because you have the greatest blessing. Why you're sad and over material things? You're healthy or you're afflicted with, 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 with the, an illness? Your heart is still joyful. You're still a happy person. Your face is still cheerful. And you're remembering Allah. Nothing comes from your mouth except praise of Allah. And thanks for Allah. And that's what makes the difference. For those who understood Islam correctly. And having the correct understanding of this deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. From those who they just Muslims by affiliation. You have Islam. Doesn't matter after that. Even subhanallah, when you're going through hardship, and you know from your belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, 
that you're going through this hardship only for your good. On account that you are patient. On this account that you are patient, you show patience, it's good for you. Allah raise your levels. Wipe your sins. As it occurs in the hadith in Sahih Muslim. Man yurid Allahu bihi khayran yusib minhu. As the Imam al nawawi mentioned in Riyad al-Salihin. If Allah wants good for a servant, put him to trial. Naam, when you go through hardship, as long as you didn't look for, for hardship, as long as you don't put yourself in there, but if you try your best, but you still get, go through some hardship, this is good for you, on account that you are patient. And your heart, Naam, you may lose a limb or two, you may get sick, but your mind is joyful. Why? Because subhanallah, what is taken from you? Couple of days of health. Allah will restore that health back. You lost your car, Allah will make give you a truck instead. It's only a test. But as long as you didn't lose your religion. That's the great loss, Ya Abdullah. That's the great loss. You're upon Islam. You're upon the Sunnah. Of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You're upon this upright religion. You're upon Tawheed. If you die on it, you're in Jannah. And you won't worry about getting sick. You don't worry about getting into any problems or difficulties. Yeah, subhanAllah, you find some of us for the little things. They get mad and their life change. And some even that little thing of a dunya that test take them away from the remembrance of Allah. Instead to say, look, doesn't matter. If I lose my job, I'm going to go look for another one. Because the one who gave me the first one, alhamdulillah, has another one for me. I just don't know when. It may be today, tomorrow, next week, next month. But I'm on Islam. That's how we're going to give da'wah to other people. If you walk um, around non-Muslims, and then the, the boss make announcement, are we cutting the hours, or we're doing this or this, and then everybody around you, you may be the only Muslim, and everybody is yelling, cursing, mad, I don't know what, and you're happy, you're still smiling, you say Alhamdulillah, and they may think you're crazy, but you explain to them, because you're in another world, man, your heart is a, this is not what gives you joy. This job is not the source of your joy. It's only the source of your bring some food on the table. That job only pay rent. That job doesn't bring joy to your heart. What brings joy to your heart? Islam. This deen of Allah. And you're still a Muslim? So where, why, why are you making a big deal of it? Just because you can come and find your, your car, the, the window is broke down and you start, no, alhamdulillah, so what? Cars break down. No, people lose their jobs. Are you the first one who loses his job? You're the first one who leave a finger, lose a finger. People lose a leg, the whole leg, two of them. Some people around you, they don't have no legs, no hands. Some people, they have no eyes to see with. They can hear, they can talk. Some people are on dialysis for the rest of their lives. Some people are laying for years in, a, in, in some hospital. Tubes, only tubes on their bodies. But you still see, you still remember, you have sound intellect, which is another favor of Allah that we're going to mention briefly after this. أَقُولُ مَا تَسْمَعُونَ وَأَسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهَ لِي وَلَكُمْ الحمد لله الذي أرسل رسوله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله وكفى بالله شهيدا وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له إقرارا به وتوحيدا وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا مزيدا أما بعد عباد الله Another favor from the favors from the great favors after Islam the ulama they mention is العقل You have intellect يا عبد الله سبحان الله Intellect, a great ni'mah from Allah. As Imam al-Barbahari rahimahullah ta'ala mentioned his point 77 in his book. And by the way, I don't memorize the book, I just review it this morning. In his point 77 in his book, 
Sharh al-Sunnah, he mentioned that al-aql hibatun wa minnatun min Allah. Intellect is a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the people are not in the same level when it comes to intellect. So be happy with what Allah has given you and use it for that which is bring you benefit in this life and in the hereafter. You know who you are. You know your family members. You know what day it is. You know if it's day or night. You know your children. You know your family. You can read the Quran and you know that this is the Quran. Thank Allah for that. This is great ni'mah. Other people cannot do these things. They don't know who they are. Rather they do things that make others make, make, laugh at them. Which is not right, by the way. When we see someone who is afflicted, we don't laugh at them, make fun of them. We thank Allah for what we have. And we praise Allah for what we have. And we make dua for them. That Allah protect them and aid them and help them. Another great blessing that subhanAllah will remind us. And when you lose your job or when you get sick or, or get a flu, and for some of us that's the end of the world, they got nothing, they broke, they... La, la, la. You have these favors, you have Islam, you have aql, intellect. And al-aman, ni'matul aman. Subhanallah. Anta amin fi baytik, amin fi sayaratik. There the other blessing of peace and security. You're secure, subhanAllah, in your house. You go to sleep, mashaAllah, ain't nobody knocking at your windows. Nobody tries to break in. You're driving in the street, ain't nobody stopping you. Yes, there are people that go and through this as we speak. May Allah have mercy on them. Naam, Muslims. In Syria. In Egypt, in Libya, in Somalia, and many other places, there are Muslims who are going through fear. No peace, no security. They are afraid for their lives. Some of them cannot even go to sleep. They have to watch for their little ones. They can't go alone in the street. But you, you live in the land of Kufr. And we are not going through this. You got peace, you go to sleep, alhamdulillah, nobody trying to break in. Except in some, we're talking in some places, bad neighborhoods, yes, there is things, but we're not talking about in general. When you live in an area, a town or a country where there is no peace, no security at all, nothing but chaos and turmoil, we thank Allah for that. When you lose your job, you say, alhamdulillah. When you get sick, say, I still have this favor and add it to the other, the other two. And another blessing as a reminder. So you understand the beauty of this deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Another reminder. Hadal khair, ni'mat al-akl wa shurb. The other blessing of Allah upon us. We have abundance in, in provision, food and drink. Talking about food, you go to Walmart, there is aisles of food. Some people, they don't even have one bucket of food. Some people, they could even find a trash can to see what they can get from it. People are dying because they couldn't find nothing to eat. People are dying because there is no water to drink. And next town or village, you find people, they have a little bit of water. They may fight over it. And we, we all we have to do is to turn the faucet. And we have two faucets, not just one. One for the cold water and one for the hot water. People have to fight for it. We have food in our homes. Some people have two, three fridges, not just one. Loaded of food. Cabinets of loaded of food. Chest freezers loaded of food. Still going to make a big fuss. He's going to divorce his wife. For a silly thing. For nothing. Because she didn't cook what he want that day. Because his mind is not onto the deen of Allah. His mind is to the dunya. If his mind on the deen. And this man the way he's thinking constantly. His mind on the akhirah. How am I going to make it? He knows that he's going to die. And he's going to be asked in the grave. He's going to stand in front of Allah. He don't know. He worries. 
Is he going to receive his book with the right hand or the left hand? What's going to happen to him on a bridge, a sirat? Is he from the people of Jannah or the people of the hellfire? He never going to worry about any plea. When the food is present for him, he's eating and that's it. He never going to make a fight, start a fight over that. Because his mind is not onto this dunya. When his wife said, okay, I got this thaw for you. Jazakallah khairan, barakallah fiqh. He's like, I didn't know that though. Why didn't you do that? I don't want to start a fight. Now his mind is into the hereafter. Are we going to do this? Alhamdulillah, la ba's. Oh, we don't need you anymore, Akhi, mashallah. You know, barakallah fiqh for what you've done. We don't need you. Alhamdulillah khairan. His mind is not onto the dunya. His mind is to the hereafter. He will never broke a fight over any matters of this dunya. Of course, he gets from the dunya what he needs. He gets from the dunya what he needs. If his rights are violated, he tries to get his rights back in a way that is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I want to read to you a couple of statements of our salaf. To make this matter clear, Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu says, Inni la amkutu rajula an arahu farigan laysa fi shay'i min amal dunya wa la amal akhira. Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu says, I really despise a man that I see him not being busy doing something that help him in this life or in the hereafter. Nothing. He's not busy with the dunya. Things that benefit him in this life and not busy with doing something for his hereafter. أن الحسن البصري رحمه الله كان في جنازة فقال لمن حوله رحم الله امرأ عمل لمثل هذا اليوم إنكم اليوم تقدرون على عمل لا يقدر عليه إخوانكم هؤلاء من أهل القبور فاغتنموا الصحة والفراغ قبل الفزعة والحساب الحسن البصري رحمه الله إمام التابعين he was in a funeral in a grave they would put somebody in a grave and he said to the people around him said may Allah have mercy on a person who work hard for this moment and then he said to those who are still alive around him, Indeed, you can still work and do things that your brother under the dirt cannot do. So therefore, take advantage of these two blessings. Health and leisure time before you stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for accounting. Abu Bakr ibn Ayyash rahimahullah ta'ala, he used to say, Inna ahadakum law sakata minhu dirhamun la dalla yawmahu yaqulu inna lillahi dhahaba dirhami وَلَا يَقُولُ ذَهَبَ يَوْمِ مَا عَمِلْتُ فِيهِ One of the great scholars named Abu Bakr ibn Ayyash رحمه الله says Indeed if one of you lose a dollar and he couldn't find it he will talk about it to everyone I lost a dollar I couldn't find it Where is my dollar? But he does not say I lost a day today I didn't do much in it No, you don't hear him saying I wasted this day man I didn't do much in it وعن الحسن البصري رحمه الله قال من علامة إعراض الله على العبد أن يجعل شغله فيما لا يعنيه الحسن البصري رحمه الله منشن this statement he says it is a sign when Allah abandon a person when Allah leave alone a person and abandon a person he make that person busy with matter that does not concern him you find the person neglecting himself Neglecting the rights of Allah upon him, the rights of the family, and then he's busy with others. نسأل الله السلام والعافية. اللهم اجعلنا ممن إذا سمعوا القول تبع وحسنة فالله لي ولكم الثبات على الدين والاستفادة من هذا العلم. نسأل الله سبحانه وتعالى يزقنا وياكم العلم النافع والعمل الصالح وصلى الله وسلم على محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا. الله أكبر الله أكبر